Hi everybody and welcome to another video. My name is Richard Seibitz, aka T101, and I'm the owner of Red Pants LOL. Today I'm going to show you the difference between a couple of filters I have sitting here. The first one is the OEM Aston Martin filter. So there's part numbers. Um, these are the ones I saw on my website. And um, then there are some aftermarket ones. Um, these are from another gentleman's car that I pulled off when I was doing some maintenance. These are a cloth filter medium. Um, and I'm going to go over a couple of things about each of these. The very basics of intake filters and filters in general is that the tighter the filtration medium, uh, so basically the less breathable it is, it's going to have more restriction but better filtration. So what you get is, in terms of an engine and intake filters, is you get less power but cleaner air, or you can have more power but less clean air. So. Um, the reason why it's important on Aston's in particular is because um, right after the intake filter sits the MAF sensor. And so this is one that I pulled out of my car when I, um, when I was fixing a few things. The original owner had a, um, a set of aftermarket filters from a well-known brand, very well respected. And I'm not trying to, before I continue, I'm not trying to take anybody away from one filter and push towards another. It's not my intention. I actually use aftermarket filters on my daily driver. On my Aston, I use OEM, so it's really just a matter of the application and the type of filters available. Um, but what I had was an issue with the MAF sensors on my Aston when I bought it from the original owner. And inside of here, um, I have better uh, pictures of this on my website, so if this doesn't turn out, you can go there. Um, but inside of here is a metal wire, and that wire is basically a very sensitive way of measuring how much air is coming through the intake system and into the engine. The reading that comes off of this is then used to match the appropriate amount of fuel being pumped into your engine to create the ideal air fuel ratio, um, which I don't know if it's ever ideal in our cars. For some reason, our cars just run super rich. Uh, it's kind of silly. They run, run like 12 to one when there should be like 14 to one, but anyway. Um, so the reason I'm showing the MAF sensor is, and that little wires because basically the intake system, you have the intake sitting here, well, it's sitting like this, and you have an airflow sensor sitting like this, just after it. It's very, it's, that's about how far it is. It's very close to each other. Um, in case we want to get really specific, it's actually like that, but whatever. Um, and the reason is because when it comes to cloth filters, they have to put oil on them. The vast majority of them use oil in order to create enough um, filtration. If you think of it as a small fish swimming through a net, if the net is very tight, like it would be on a paper filter, the fish cannot get through, it gets caught in that net. That's the same exact thing as a contaminant getting caught by that filtration me uh, medium so it doesn't get into your engine. It gets kept right there. On a cloth filter, the net is very loose. You get a lot of flow going through it, so you have no resistance, and therefore, for your engine, a lot more power. Um, however, the fish can fly, or swim, straight through. Um, so what, filtri uh, what the um, cloth filtration does is it adds oil. And what oil does is it makes that net sticky. So even if a fish can swim through the net, if it touches the side or any piece of that net, it gets stuck by that oil. Um, it's a weird analogy, but hopefully that makes sense. It's basically, um, you know, think of the game of operation. It's a matter of getting the tweezers in to extract the item without touching the sides. If you touch the sides, it buzzes. Well, that's what these do. If it touches the, the side, it gets stuck, um, even if it can fit through the medium. So you get a better filtration with more power. There are two main downsides, though. The first is that the oil can contaminate the um the uh the mass sensor if it's not so those two let me backtrack the uh the two downsides are one if you oil too much and two if you oil too little if you oil too much that um that oil can actually come off and foul your mass sensors the uh, basically any bit of that that comes off can get stuck in there um, and as soon as that wire gets in contact with the oil the mass sensor has a limited lifespan um the other downside is if you don't oil enough, then filtration isn't optimal and you get a lot of stuff getting into your engine, which isn't ideal. So um, the upside to oiled filters is that one, like I said, you get more power and two, they're generally reusable, just like a piece of cloth that you wear, you throw it into, you know, you wash it and then you re-oil it and you can reuse it. Um, so even though, the, even though they're typically more expensive right off the bat, or right off the bat, Sayings are hard um, from the beginning. Uh, it's it tends to pay for itself after the first couple of uses because all you have to do is reuse it. The paper filter 
um, is sort of the opposite of the cloth. It has much better filtration, but more resistance. You don't get nearly as much airflow. The nice thing about the um, about our Astons, though, is you have a lot of filtration area. I mean, this is a ton, and if you look at the difference in the folds, you can see that the cloth one has big wide folds and the paper one has small folds. So if you were to take these apart and lay them end-to-end, -end, which I probably, actually, I might end up doing just for fun, um, you're going to see that there's a lot more surface area to this one than there is to this one. So it may actually even out, or it does help the paper one get better. So even though there's more resistance through a given piece of paper, there's enough of it to where you have a lot of air that's still able to pass through. Um, so the downside to the paper ones is one, they're not reusable. You do need to change them out. Um, and they do have a lot more restriction uh, for airflow so you don't get as much power. But again, they do have the best filtration. So in front of me, I have got a pot of water and it's, uh, as I'm moving these around, these are used filters because I have them and why spend hundreds of dollars to do this with new ones. Um, so I've got like dust and dirt and bugs laying all over my dining room table and my girlfriend's gonna be pissed off if she sees this before I clean up. But uh, this is full of water. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna dunk each of these into the water to see how quickly water can flow through it. That's gonna tell us a couple of things. One is, um, well, first off, water is a lot more dense than air. So if water can get through without a problem, air is gonna be flying through. The, um, and conversely, if the water can't get through, it means it's a lot more restrictive. Um, so air can still get through, but the water obviously can't, which is a good thing when it comes to filtration. The other thing is uh, there's been a lot of discussion. This is an ongoing topic um, of running open air boxes on the cars. So the, um, I actually was helping a gentleman do the service on his car, was it yesterday um, or the day before? Anyway, uh, and we did his intake filters. In order to change out the intake filters on a V8 Vantage and a DB9 is you have to take out the, take off the front wheels. Well, you don't have to, it just makes it a lot easier. And this is all written up on my website, redpants.lol, so you can find this. But to give a quick recap, it's a lot of work. You have to lift the front of the car up, you have to take the wheels off, you have to, you know, the front wheels, you have to take the fender liners down. There are what, like seven or eight bolts on each airbox cover? Who came up with that? Um, it's stupid, it's really stupid. Um, anyway, I'm getting, I'm getting flustered. Hold on. I... Um, so anyway, it's a pain in the butt. Um, air boxes are basically there to limit the amount of noise that you can hear while driving your car. On a naturally aspirated engine, it's not that big of a deal. You get a little bit more air intake noise. On a turbocharged car, it's loud. When you change out the intake system, you get a lot more noise. You hear that whooshing, it's, it's pretty wild. Um, the other thing is that the intake boxes are underneath the headlights of the cars on, on um, Astons for packaging purposes. And it makes it so that you don't have to deal with a lot of noise. Even if you run an open air box, you're not going to get that much noise. Um, but that is the primary, well, one of the primary purposes of an air box is to reduce intake noise. The other primary purpose of an air box is to protect the filter. And that's what we're worried about because they sit so far forward and so low. And um, if you saw that intake in uh, the intake system video that I did um, not too long ago, but if you go to my uh, YouTube channel or on my website, you'll see a, um, a video that I did discussing the intake system overall. And basically, uh, you have got a front inlet inside the grill of the car that then directs air into the air boxes. And what's kind of interesting about that is you can see if this shows up on the video, this is a dark spot right here on this filter that is much darker than anywhere else. And the reason for that is because that air coming in from the front of the car, this is where it was pointed at. So you do see that there is that airflow, which is pretty interesting. I thought that was pretty interesting. It's kind of makes sense, but you know, it's also one of those nerdy little, yay, information's fun. Um, anyway, so um, when it comes to filters being in a vulnerable location, we're worried about water, thus the pot. Um, and if we run an open intake box, we're going to get more airflow um, because there's less restriction. You don't have one bit of air coming in, you have air from all over the place. And there are some other things that go into it, like uh, the intake temperatures, uh, because if you're sucking air in from all over and it happens to be a hot place, it's no good. But with where we're looking at in the car, 
that's not really an issue. So the main issue is just protecting the filters. All right, so obviously not clean, these are dirty, but I'm gonna go ahead and let's do the cloth one first. Um, the inside of this filter is remarkably clean, uh, and it's actually really well made. This is a really good filter. Um, you can see how much grime is stuck in there. And like I said, this is the spot where um, that intake flow is coming from. On the back, you don't see nearly as much, like it's actually pretty clean back here. But where it comes in, you can see there's a lot of crap. And that's one of those, you know, this is another byproduct of a, of a um, cloth filter is as things build up, they don't just fall off because of that oil creating a stickiness, it tends to accumulate things. So over time, the um, surface area does get reduced quite a bit. Um, so let's go ahead and dunk this. I'm actually, I've, I have no idea what's going to happen here. So as we put this in, you can see that goes down quick. That was really, really quick. You can see how much just went through there. So let's let that drain a little bit. Now let's do paper. Nothing. There is nothing happening. There is nothing happening. Oh, 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 I got some water. There it is. Got a trickle. And that's, uh, oh, now there we go. A little bit more. A little bit more. Starting to come through. I have to do this slowly because I'm worried about overfilling this thing, but you can see it's definitely deep in there. And it's starting to come through. So obviously it's taking a while. And it's still slow. I actually have to dump this because it's not going to drain back out the other way. So, there you have it. A nice little test. Obviously, super scientific. Um, but that, let's see if I can sit back down here. Um, it just kind of goes to show that when we have different filters, there's a lot that goes in that that's, you have to take into consideration. Um, the main thing that I'm concerned about with our cars, when we're using aftermarket filters, is um, we don't have to worry about sound because of where it's located. Uh, typically, that's not going to be an issue. Plus, the exhausts on our cars are pretty loud, so you're not going to really hear the intake much regardless. Um, but on uh, the rest of this, we're worried about a couple of other things, intake temperatures, which um, I was running some diagnostics on my car and I saw that uh, my intake temperatures were pretty much am at the ambient uh, air temperature. So it was, uh, I think, 40, it was between 40 and 43 degrees Fahrenheit yesterday. And the temperatures that I was seeing was in within one to two degrees Fahrenheit of that. Um, sorry, I don't know the conversion for Celsius off the top of my head, but you can get an idea, one to two degrees Fahrenheit difference, if not the same, um, for the air intake temperatures, which is pretty good. Um, I mean, that's pretty much ideal because there's no, that, what that says is there's no radiant heat from the engine affecting the intake, sense, uh, the intake temperatures. Um, so if we do run an open air box, you can deal with um, that cold air or whatever, you don't have to worry about it so much. But the one big issue is protecting the filter. And as you saw with how quickly this one <laughs> just let water through and the paper one just wouldn't. So I guess my suggestion then is if you want to run open air boxes for extra power or for convenience of, um, of changing out the filters in general, you can do it with the paper filters without worrying about air ingestion because it's going to take a long time for that to come through. And if you submerge the front of your car enough to where you're so, where you dip the filter into water like you just saw here, well, there's only so much you can do regardless. You, you know, it's it shouldn't have driven it through a flood. And I know things happen. I'm not trying to, you know, if it, if that did happen any, but or if your teenage son drives it into a canal, um, that sucks. But when it comes to puddles or rain or splashing. This is actually, it looks like this is going to protect you. Um, so uh, I'll probably end up doing that with mine. I know a couple of guys have talked about doing um, these uh, open filter or open box, uh, basically adapter kits. I know a couple of them have talked to me about um, reselling those. So we'll see. I'm going to be starting up a garage sale section. So if it's not something in collaboration, then I'll set it up so that you can purchase those. I'll, based on this, I'll probably be running them myself because like I said, I like using the paper filters for protecting my engine um, for, with the filtration. And because there is so much surface area um, to this, I mean, you can see there's just tons and it's just tons and tons that even though this is a restrictive medium, 
there's enough of it and two of them, which is a lot, uh, that you don't have to worry about that. And even looking at dyno graphs and everything, um, there's no there's no real bottleneck to the engines when it comes to the uh, the way the, the air flows into it. Um, typically you'll see that with a lot of uh, naturally aspirated engines, they may taper off, but ours are actually pretty well built to keep escalating in horsepower all the way to redline. So anyway, um, I'm just babbling at this point, but that, I think that kind of sums up what I was looking at. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, rich at redpants.lol or through the contact page of my website, redpants.lol. They both go to the same email address. Um, they both go to rich at redpants.lol, uh, whichever way you do it. So feel free to contact me either way. Um, other than that, if you like the videos, I do them at random, so please feel free to subscribe. Um, I get a lot of emails from all over the place. Uh, people either just thanking me for the work I'm doing or uh, just you know offering advice for things that I could do different. I know I say um a lot and I babble a lot and this is a much longer video, video than it should have been. Um, I just said um again. But all the feedback I get from everybody is very, very helpful. So I do appreciate it. There's been a massive amount of support from all you guys and it does definitely get appreciated. So um, please feel free to check in again and subscribe and like the videos because everybody that helps, it's a nice bit of support. And uh, please check out the shop on my website. That's how all these videos are funded is through that. If you have any questions, again, rich at redpants.lol. Thank you.